many of you guys have seen news reports where they put it? Flat earthers believe that the earth is going upwards at 9.8, whatever. How many have seen that, right? Don't do that. You know, if your goal is to try to make us look stupid, I, let me give you a hint. Our numbers are growing exponentially worldwide. I doubt yours are. So if you're going to try to make us look stupid by doing that, you're just going to prove how stupid you are. So I'm trying to help you out here. All right. Uh, number five, you guys don't know anything more about gravity than we do. So stop pretending that you do. And if you don't believe me, here's one of your experts saying just basically the same thing. What is gravity? You have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> wow. No, here's the difference. We can describe gravity. We can say what it does to other things. We can, we can measure it, predict with it. But when you start asking, like, what it is, I, I, I don't know. We look out in the universe, and 85% of all the gravity that's out there has some mysterious unknown source. We add up all the stars, the galaxies, the planets, the comets, the black holes, the dark clouds, everything out there that we can see, touch, smell, or taste, and it doesn't add up to give us the gravity that we see operating in this universe. So really, we should be calling it the dark force, because we don't know if it's made of matter. It could be a profound misnomer, sending people off in thought directions that might not really be the right path. So dark matter is just simply what we call this thing about which we know nothing, responsible for 85% of the gravity of the cosmos. It is the longest standing unsolved problem in modern astrophysics. Dark matter, dark energy. Everything we know about the universe, what we're made of, galaxies, stars, planets, that's all right here. So according to this chart, we are 96% stupid. Well, at least they're willing to admit it. Now, here's the thing. The further back we look in the ancient record, the more we find massive megalithic structures all over the world. Sometimes even on top of mountains, rocks stacked so perfectly in irregular shapes without any mortar. And scientists look at this and they can't figure out how it was done. So, of course, it must have been ancient aliens, right? Or even people like myself have speculated and said, you know, maybe it was done by giants. And while I suspect there may still be some truth to the latter, uh, what if we've all got it wrong just based on a faulty premise? Consider, for example, the more recent case of the Coral Castle in Florida. In Search Of has investigated the mystery of many ancient monuments, the pyramids, Stonehenge, and Easter Island. A solution to these puzzles may be concealed in Florida's Coral Castle. This monumental structure was created by one man, with his bare hands in the 20th century. What strange forces created this castle of secrets? Coral Castle has been called the eighth wonder of the world. This place is a fantasy garden and an engineering marvel. The blocks are cut and set with great precision, locked without mortar. At 30 tons, the greatest single stone in Coral Castle is twice as massive as any in the pyramids. Here are massive megaliths, huge astrological symbols, and structures whose purpose is a total mystery. Coral Castle was built not in ancient times, but in the 20th century. Most curious of all, Coral Castle was built in secret by one man, Edward Leedskalman a frail little hermit. With no modern machinery and with no help, he somehow hand-carved and lifted every single block, a total of three million pounds. With all our modern technology, we might be able to duplicate the pyramids, but how could we ever do it with our bare hands? Dreamers beyond the fringe of science have postulated a long-lost art of harnessing anti-gravity. It seems incredible, but Ed Leedskalman may have rediscovered these ancient secrets. He'd say he, uh, this is because of the stars and the moon, and he would go on and he would show us his electrical machine, now it made electricity, and he'd always divert your question. 
This block weighs nine tons. It's just one piece of rock. See what you can do with one hand? Crazy, huh? How many of you guys have heard of Coral Castle before? Pretty amazing. You know, what if gravity is not what we've been taught to believe, the Newtonian-Einstein theories of gravity? Not only did this guy build this whole thing by himself, I think it was like 10 or 11 years later, he had to move the entire thing, and he did. He moved the whole thing like in a couple of nights by himself. So clearly he understood something, and this is a new field of research for me, so I'm not going to really talk on it. Uh, I'll just kind of put it out there for you guys to consider. There are a few books that, as I started looking into electrogravitics and all that kind of stuff, found out that there was a lot of uh, technical journals and military uh, applications and things being worked on from the 1920s to the 1950s dealing with electrogravitics, anti-gravitics, anti anti-gravity, going all the way back to the 1920s. Uh, I started reading this book, Hunt for Zero Point, a uh, fascinating book, and he recommended uh, some of the other authors and books that you see on the screen there. Uh, I would recommend you guys check that out, too. Uh, because perhaps what we think of gravity is a profound misnomer, as uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, sending people on thought paths that may not be correct. And clearly, somebody in the ancient world knew and understood things a lot differently than we did uh, than we do. I mean, they're moving huge blocks of stone up mountains for crying out loud, and building megalithic structures that don't even have mortar. You know, everything's so tightly knit together. Amazing. Another website to check out or our YouTube channel is the Thunderbolts Project, talking about the uh, electroplasma universe. Fascinating stuff. Uh, so consider this. If anti-gravitics has been figured out since the 1920s, hmm, don't you think it might be easy to fake space in a warehouse? Just consider that. Look into the Earth's magnetic field and ley lines and things like that. Have you ever heard about ley lines that the Earth supposedly has some sort of a electrical field around it and, uh, you know, megalithic structures around the world like uh, the pyramids of Giza and whatnot are built on these things? That's what it looks like on a globe projection map. Uh, somebody took the ley lines and put it onto the flat Earth map, and curiously enough, it ends up being the esoteric uh, seed of life, flower of life, which just so happens to be the logo of the new flag of the planet Earth. <laughs> you can look that up on flagofplanetearth.com. Interesting. Uh, now, when it comes to electromagnetism, I'd like you to consider something else. Uh, I recently picked this up on Amazon, this interesting levitating, rotating, floating moon <laughs> for about 20 bucks. Pretty cool. You know, check that out. A self-illuminating moon floating, no problem. And I continued to look on Amazon and elsewhere. I found this on YouTube, this levitating clock. Now, if you read Genesis, the creation account, it says the sun, moon, and stars were put there for time and for seasons. This is a big clock that we're living on. That's why I so appreciate David Weiss's uh, app that he's put together because it illustrates that quite nicely. Now, if we can make toys and novelty clocks with this principle, I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest the absurd notion that it just may be possible that the creator could have come up with something similar. <laughs> just call me crazy. Okay. I think it's possible. 